Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. Now, obviously, as you can tell, setting is a little bit different to what we usually have. It's because I'm not at my house in Vancouver. I'm actually in Chicago right now. And the last week has been pretty crazy. Um, last Friday, we left for New York. And for those of you who follow us on Instagram, you could probably tell we went to the US Open semifinals. So today's gonna be a bit of a different video. It's actually gonna be a New York slash US Open vlog of our experience at the semifinals, which as you can probably imagine was absolutely incredible. Now there's one thing that I need to address right away before we go on. And you're going to see the seats we were sitting in were absolutely amazing. And that's because the wonderful rep over at Head in Vancouver, Cliff, managed to get us courtside tickets to watch Alcaraz versus Medvedev. So I just wanna say an enormous, huge, massive, massive thank you to Cliff, to Head. It was an amazing experience for the four of us that went and we will be forever grateful. Now that's definitely not gonna help the rumors floating around that Head is somehow paying us to say good things about their rackets. I say good things about Head rackets because they make excellent rackets, especially the Gravity Pro which I have managed to fit into this video somehow. Um, but yeah, they got us the tickets. They're just not paying us to make this video or anything like that. So a huge, huge thank you to them again. And I wanna give a huge, huge thank you to all of you because a few days ago we hit 5K subscribers, which is absolutely mind blowing to me. And I'm just so excited to keep this channel going. It's been an amazing experience since we kind of started kicking off a little bit more in February. And yeah, onwards and upwards, I guess. We'll have normal videos again soon. Uh, but hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Let's get into the vlog. Bear with me, this is not my specialty. Um, so it might be a little sloppy and choppy here and there. But hopefully you all enjoy it and we'll go for a little recap in a few minutes here. All right, so it's 1.12 in the morning. Our flight to New York got canceled. Shout out JetBlue. Yeah, and um, and Air Canada. So we're on our way to Seattle. It's gonna be a two and a half hour drive. We're exhausted. But we're probably gonna be in New York on time. Hopefully. Otherwise we miss Medvedev Alcaraz. But yeah, spirits are high. Hopefully they'll still be high tomorrow. It's like this. So we finally arrived in New York. Actually, we're in New York. New York. New York. Um, and we're waiting for our bags. But we got our semifinal tickets at 7 p.m. The tickets are there. We met up with Kai. He's the guy in the videos that slides really well. So. And we got Max looking like, looking like Bad Bunny over here. And we got Djokovic annihilating Shelton. Kind of happy we didn't go to that one. We gotta get some candid. Uh, Walk into wherever we're going, Flushing Meadows. That's where we're going. Gotta get some candid walk into Flushing Meadows footage. You gotta take pictures of too to make me look cool. Can we take pictures? Can you put pictures in a vlog? Guys, so how do the camera? You're the most photogenic. What's up, guys? No. What did you just say? Don't take it out, cut it out. <laughs> Woo! She's a beauty. Woo. All right, boys, so a little prediction going. What are we saying here? Alcaraz, saying, Medvedev? Uh, Medvedev in three. Alcaraz Medvedev in three. Alcaraz in three. Alcaraz in three. Alcaraz in three. Alcaraz in three. Four. Alcaraz. Alcaraz in four. I got Alcaraz in five. What do you think about that uh, Djokovic celebration there at the end? I don't know. I mean, it's cold.
so big, he has like crowd. <laughs> Say about what it was we just electric, sick. electric, it absolutely was awesome. insane. Go ahead, go. Holy sh shenanigans! Shout out Cliff, shout out Hadley. Wow, okay, first awesome. of all, Medvedev, what an absolute insane player. Alcaraz, your goat. What do we have to say about that? It was cool. It was cool. It was, cool. It was yeah. I'd say it was pr probably closer to a 12 out of 10, which is what Medvedev said he played, which he did. It was insane. He was getting lucky a bit. Bro, Medvedev. He was getting lucky a bit. Uh, the lines were kind of ready for some pizza. Ready for some pizza. I'm ready for some pizza. So we're just walking out of Arthur Ashe right now, and hey, what's up? I just wanted to give my initial reaction because that was insane. I mean, I've been to a couple professional tennis matches in my life, but that was that was a whole different story. That was crazy. I mean, the level. I don't know. I it looked insane from the stands. It probably looked pretty good on TV too. Uh, we're just going by the cops, that's why I'm flashing it's red okay, and blue. But, wow. I have no words. I'll try to analyze it a bit tomorrow. I don't know, I'm not really a YouTube uh, tennis match analyst. So is 90, or 95 inch square inch heads the wave now? Is I that, think, is that I what think, you're saying? I think, is that the difference? I think that's the, the proof. I think it was. I think that's it's the proof that control. my statement about 95 square inch head size is being obsolete may have been false. I did say, that Djokovic and Medvedev both use 95s, and that mere mortals shouldn't, and that they're not mere mortals. So that's in my defense. But if you want to reach that level, that, you know, three hours, 30 minutes, grinding it out, New York community, do you need a 95 square inch head? Because the 98 wasn't cutting it tonight, you know? Medvedev was painting a lot of lines. You think he if was he had a smaller head, lines. he'd paint more lines? So I think uh, I think our analysis of Medvedev's tennis racket might you be done there. think the roof being closed helped him out a bit? Uh, what does that do? Does it make it slower or faster? It makes it a little bit faster. Does it actually? I actually don't know the science behind it, but yeah, picture like indoor surfing. Yeah. Okay. Well, that would that would help him, right? Makes that ball skid a little bit more. Nighttime too. It's like yeah. nighttime. Well, nighttime, a nighttime makes it slower. Yeah. So. Medvedev's game. Yeah, we're going the wrong way, by the way. It's tough. Yeah, we are going the. Okay. Don't worry. We ended up finding what the right way was and got home, and we were all pretty tired after that because. For about three and a half hours, we watched some of the most incredible tennis we've ever watched, either live or on TV or whatever. Um, yeah, what, an, what to say, what an amazing, amazing experience. Again, thank you so much, Head. That's something we're gonna keep for the rest of our lives. And we were just, we were just so lucky to be there. Now I do just wanna talk about a few things because before the match, there was a lot of talk about Alcaraz versus Djokovic in the final. And I was a little bit surprised by this because Medvedev this year on hard courts has been honestly potentially better than any other year he's had on hard courts. I mean, he has won a major, so maybe not better than that year, but he has been incredible. And yeah, he definitely got kind of destroyed by Alcaraz at Wimbledon, but I wasn't so sure. That's why I said Alcaraz in five. I think my heart still wanted Alcaraz to win, which is why I said five, but the first set was pretty even. 
Um, a lot of good tennis. But then after that, Medvedev played. I mean, he played incredibly well. He might not have the most orthodox style of play, and I don't think it translates as well to the camera as other games, but watching him live was just crazy. I mean, the guy gets to everything. He puts everything back. He makes you hit another ball. He hits really, really flat shots with this technique that, I don't know, I've never really seen before. On top of that, he has a serve that gets him out of sticky situations. That was one big, big thing that we noticed during the match. Alcaraz, I know he's only 20, but he got no free points off of his first serve. Medvedev, down a break point, serves an ace, boom, you move on. Alcaraz, down a break point, puts the ball into play, Rally goes to neutral pretty much right away, and then he has to win it on its own merit, which he was doing because he's an incredible, incredible tennis player. It's funny because when Federer retired, I wrote an article that was pretty nostalgic, pretty sad, and I was, I was pretty sad myself because I was like, okay, obviously watching tennis is fun when it's anyone, but there's something about an electrifying player like Federer that just every point you're on the edge of your seat waiting for something insane to happen. And as Federer retired, another guy like that has come out of nowhere. His volleys and touch shots in particular are, they're just out of this world. I mean, the way he scoops the ball, when you see it from the angle we were sitting at, it's the finesse involved. It's like, it's like he just has a split second longer to do things uh, when he's on the court and it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to watch. The precision that he was hitting them with was crazy. And he had to because Medvedev had that never say die attitude where he was going to chase everything down. So it pretty much had to be the perfect shot and he was hitting them. Um, but I do have to say pretty much the whole match, it felt like Medvedev was in control. After the first few games of the first set, I'd say he played near perfect tennis. Another thing I want to address, there's been a bit of talk about the US Open crowd, uh, I guess not liking Medvedev. Um, and I can't really talk about the other matches that happened because we didn't go to them. But I want to say in this match, first of all, shouting between first and second serves, completely unacceptable. There definitely was a little bit of that at the very end. And Medvedev talked about it in his, his post-match interview. Uh, he's actually a pretty funny guy. And there definitely was a little bit of that, but I actually think the crowd was really, really good most of the night. I definitely went in there favoring Alcaraz, and you can't really blame a crowd for preferring a certain player. Like, this guy is the most electrifying guy since Federer. He hits these crazy, insane shots from anywhere on the court. He's got a beautiful forehand. So you can't really blame the crowd for preferring a guy, but... I think whenever Medvedev did something that warranted a crowd reaction, the crowd was, you know, getting up, standing ovation, clapping. And I think in his post-match interview, he actually talked about that. He said the crowd was, was really good, but it was electrifying to be a part of that. And I've been to a few sporting events in my life. We actually went to watch Jets Bills uh, a few days after and... Yeah, not much compares to watching high-level semifinal Grand Slam tennis in terms of crowd atmosphere. It was absolutely incredible. That was also my first time in New York. Um, what a crazy city. I think the crowd kind of mirrors what the city is to perfection. Absolutely wild city. Uh, maybe we should start doing city reviews um, instead of tennis racket reviews. What do you guys think? Let me know. <laughs> Just kidding. That's cringe. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully you guys like this. I know it's a little bit different style of video. Uh, probably not the most professional vlog you've ever seen, but my first attempt at doing one. So hopefully we'll have a few more in the future. If you do like it, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and again, one last thank you to Head. Thank you all again for 5,000 subscribers. Um, I don't really have any product to sell, so if you do want to go check out our website, it's racketsandrunners.ca. Um, but thank you all so much, and we'll see you next week.